Welcome back to Storytime. I'm Miss Joanna. Today's book is I Am Small by Chin Lang. I picked this book because I figured most of you that I'm reading to are probably pretty small. At least compared to me, if you haven't met me, I am really tall. But I used to be small just like you, and you'll grow up someday just like me. I hope that you really like this book. I Am Small My name is Mimi. I am very small. I might as well be called Minnie. It's true. At home, Daddy, Mommy, Nicholas, and Marie are all taller than me. So is Gus, our dog. It's the same thing at school. All my friends tower over me. And sidewalk crowds are the worst. I wouldn't be surprised if nobody noticed me. Being really small bugs me. When will I grow up big enough to take up as much space in the world as everyone else? My feet barely reach the edge of the seat on the bus. I bounce all over the place on the way to school. At Olivia's bakery, I can't even see all the pretty desserts in the display case. Just imagine the trouble I have picking the nicest cake. At Pete's butcher shop, the sausage links are longer than me. I checked. At Jack's Fish Market, the catch of the day stares at me with its big, bulgy eyes, ready to swallow me up in one gulp. And in class, I can only reach the bottom of the blackboard. It's annoying, especially when I have a lot I want to write. Why are you complaining? Remy asked me the other day. You're always the first in the cafeteria line, and you get the biggest piece of cake. When I try to hurry to the front of the line, I end up bumping into everyone, he said. You always win at hide and seek, Annie told me later. I wish I would squeeze into small hiding places like you can. I'm always the first to be found. And you're always in the front row for class pictures, Celeste added. I had to stand in the back, even when I wear my favorite shirt, the one with the funny Yeti. You can only see my head. At home, Nicholas said, I envy all your small secret places. Mine always gets in someone's way, in the kitchen or in the living room. But they just don't get it. I'm frustrated because they can do a lot of stuff that I can't because I'm so small. Isn't it obvious? But, well, if I think about it, it's possible that there are some advantages to being small, like snuggling in bed between mommy and daddy, or playing nights with Gus, or practicing for the synchronized swimming championship in the bathtub, my pretend pool. One day after school, Daddy comes to get me. He's all bright-eyed and smiley. There's a surprise at home, he tells me. A surprise? I love surprises! What could it be? A real-life swimming pool? A hot air balloon? The biggest piece of cake in the world? When we get home, I throw my bag on the floor and run to my room. The surprise is in here, Daddy says, pointing to his and Mommy's bedroom. At first, I don't notice anything. Then I see him, all pink and a little wrinkled like me when I stay in the bathtub too long. Meet Max, your little brother. 
whispers Mommy. He's super small, I say. Of course, he's brand new, Mommy says. You started out like this too, you know, very small. And look at you now, a big sister. Mommy's right. So whispering carefully because Max's ears are also very small, I tell him, just be patient. One day you'll be big too. The end.